In this episode, I take a long time to do maths. Hello and welcome to episode uh, 15. I have no idea what episode we're up to now. Episode 15, I think. Uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Real Estate TV. I'm very excited to have you on the show this morning. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit heavy, so bear with me. Um, But it's going to be one of those episodes uh, where I talk about uh, the history of property uh, and where I think we're going. Um, I am going to be speaking based on history, as I just said. Uh, It's not going to be me guessing based off the back of nothing. If you disagree with me, please feel free to jump in the comments. And um, I actually love being told that I'm wrong because uh, it means that I can learn from it. Uh, But we are going to jump straight on in. I am going to refer to my phone a couple of times, uh, purely because there's so much data that we've got to get through today, um, and I have a shocking memory. Um, So first up, uh, I want to talk about um, what things were worth uh, back in 1975. So in 1975, the average house price was $19,800. Uh, and the average wage was $7,600. So if we do the math on that, I'm just using my calculator. Uh, if we do 19,800 divided by $7,600, uh, you were borrowing um, in a mortgage 2.6 times your average, uh, your, your yearly wage, should I say. So 2.6. Now the thing that I find alarming is today in Melbourne, the average property Median price is $665,000. And the average wage is $1,600 a week, 83K, divided by 83,000. We are now borrowing eight times what our, our yearly wage is. So that's the concern. That's the concern that I'm having. That ratio is going up. It's not coming down. Um, And really the reason I'm making this episode is to sit you down and tell you that um, I think that today is the day that you need to buy property if it's something that you ever want to do. Uh, Because I genuinely believe that over the next decade it's going to progress and that eight I think will become a nine and a half, maybe even a ten. And... um, and, and that's going to mean that things are going to start very, very quickly becoming quite unaffordable. Um, unaffordable, should I say. Now, I think that's the reason that the government have, well, banks have started allowing um, 5% deposits for loans because um, they're just more expensive than they've ever been, but not from a monetary value point of view, from a percentage point of view of what you're earning every year. Uh, it's becoming very, very difficult to be able to save a 20% deposit. I mean, what's 20% of 650? It's it's just 24? 650, oh, 665 actually. 665,000... I was not very good at maths in school. One three three. It's one three three. One hundred and thirty three thousand dollars a year. Uh, that that's huge. I mean, if you were to actually save that, that would take a really long time, unless you had a partner. But if you were on the average of eighty three k a year and doing it yourself, I mean, if you were lucky and you could put twenty k aside a year, it's still going to take you six point six five years, which is a lot. And I think that number is going to get worse. Now, I'm not here to be a doomsayer by no point. I think right now is such a great time to buy a property because you can get a 5% um, deposit loan still. Yes, it has a high interest rate and yes, you will be paying LMI, but if you're a first home buyer and you can get your parents to go guarantor for you, you won't be paying LMI. So, if we have a look at 665,000 and then you... Shocking memory. Um, six six five. Ah, five percent deposit. Uh, hmm, hmm. 
$33,250 for the average house price. Now, of course, you're not going to go out and buy a $665,000 mortgage unless you haven't got your head screwed on properly. You're probably going to look for something a little bit cheaper. I mean, I bought this unit way back when for three three five. It's now worth four hundred. dollars That's the sort of ballpark you're probably going to sit in. I mean, four hundred dollars though, five percent deposit is twenty grand. So I genuinely believe this is probably one of the last times in history, and I'm saying this as a State of the Union, I believe that this is the one of the last times in history that you'll be able to buy a house with a reasonable deposit like that. I think that over the next decade it's going to change. Um, and my genuine belief is that, well, I got my data from 1975. I think that by the year, well, that's an extra 45 years, 2065, 2064. I think that by the year 2064, people like me and you will not be buying property because it'll just be too expensive. I mean, if we have a look at um, the percentage by how property has grown, um, so we've got, uh, it was, so now it's six, six, five, oh, 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 and we divide that by 19,800, yeah. It's gone up 33.58 times what it was then. So if you apply that number to what we have now, da -da -da -da, uh, clearly it was not good at maths at school. Uh, six, six, five, oh, 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 times 33.58, $22.33 million. So if you look at the data and you believe that that rule won't change over time, government initiatives won't change it, um, spending habits of investors won't change it, what we're saying is that in the year 2064, property will be worth $22.33 million. That's a lot of spundleless. Um, and if you have to try and save a 5% deposit based on that, divide by 100 times five, it's a $1.1 million deposit. Uh, I did the math earlier and I think that by that stage, well, if we have a look at it, the average wage in uh, 75 was 7,600, I'll do it backwards. It's now 83, okay, 83 bit, divided by 7,600, so 10.92. So the average wage has gone up by 10.92. So if we apply that 83, 83,000 divided by times, so 10.92, talking about $906,000 um, for, so that's the wage that you're going to be earning in order to apply for a, a $22.33 million property. Now I could be way off. I mean, property could only go up by $100,000 in the next 45 years. That's horrible. But I don't think that to be the case. I think that I think that it probably will go up by something like that. And I just think it's going to get to a point, there'll be a threshold, there'll be a moment in time where we see normal human beings phasing out. And I personally, I personally believe, and this is not what anyone else is saying, this is just a hunch that I have. I think that the way property will be funded will be tenants. So someone like me, I'm uh, 22 years old, um, and I just bought a home. I wouldn't be buying a home. I'd be renting somewhere, and I believe I'd be, I'd be renting, and the property would be funded, I think, by a syndicate of people that have investors as well. So what I mean by that is there's a, there's a company at the moment um, who have set up a business, and they're called Brick X. Um, and what they do is um, <clears throat> they work like a syndicate, so a group of investors, but you can jump on their website and buy bricks. And what I mean by that is, I think they've decided there's 10,000 bricks in a property and each brick is worth $50. So you invest $50 into BrickX, it's a bit like buying stocks at the end of the day. Um, you can pick your property, um, they, they have a couple and you pick which one you want to invest in. So you give them $50 um, and if the, uh, if the property goes up by 10% in that year, your brick is then worth $55 and you can sell out.
So I think that's how property is gonna be invested in in the future. It's obviously on a very small scale right now. Um, probably a really good time to jump in and have a look at BrickX. Um, I have not done enough research uh, in BrickX to speak too much about whether it's good or bad. It's something I wanna do a little bit more research in. It's definitely something that interests me, um, especially considering the fact that um, it's, uh, where I believe the market is going, I think that's going to be a very powerful tool. I do think it's potentially ahead of its time just, and that's why a lot of people haven't heard about it. Um, but I think it's a really, really cool idea. Um, back to the syndicates that I was saying, what a syndicate is, it's a group of people, let's call it seven investors, um, and then a business spends their money and buys um, something or invests uh, using their cash. Um, so th that's what I think it'll, it'll be. I think syndicates will set up businesses and get investors like BrickX and that's how they'll fund more um, property purchases. Um, and I think that will be the, be the future of property. So I still think you will be able to invest in property um, by no means. I mean, life, I think, is a game and I think a lot of people like to play that game. That's why you buy investment properties because you're trying to set yourself up for your future and you are trying to play Monopoly. Um, and I think that uh, products like this will definitely uh, be able to um, uh, help you help you play the game. Um, so I think that's I think that's where it's going. Um, and that's why I believe now is the best time out of out of any era, to be honest with you to be buying property because you can see what's coming and you can see what's happened. There's now enough data and with the arbitrage of the internet, I mean, there is so much information you can get. You can sit there all night and become a property expert in, I don't know, five days. I reckon if you just read and read and read and read and read and read for nine hours every night, you would know everything. Back in the seventies, that just wasn't feasible. I mean, you had to go to a library and rent a book and be relying on them having a book on property. And I just think we're just in this time right now where there's so much information and there's so much data and history so we can understand where it's going. And you really just need to go and take it, take advantage of it, reach out and grab it. There's tons of prosperity out there. Go and get yours. Go and get yours. Start saving. Cancel Netflix. Sell your car. Don't go to Italy. Unless you want to. I think that's another thing that uh, isn't necessarily spoken about in property a lot. Um, you need to be buying a house because you want to buy a house. Don't go and buy a house because you feel like it's what you're supposed to do or your mum or your friends. Just tune all that out. Or me telling you to cancel Netflix. I think you need to be doing what you need to make yourself happy. I would rather smile in my Toyota than cry in my Ferrari. I think that's such a great saying, um, and I think it rings true. I, I mean, there are some people out there that are forcing themselves to buy property uh, because of the expectation of someone else, um, and I think that's that, I think that's really bad. To be honest with you, I think that it's going to harbor resentment. You're going to end up resenting this person in a long time because. If you actually don't want to buy a property, it's quite tough and you're going to really struggle, I think. So I think you need to be asking yourself why you want to buy a property. Uh, personally, I think it's a, a good investment, a great investment, actually. I mean, I just told you that they're going to go up by a lot of money over the next 45 years. Um, so, I mean, the proof's in the pudding with that. Um, but um, yeah, I think you need to work out if it's actually what you want to do. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, it was a bit heavy. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot, though. I'm, I'm a big fan of these sort of heavy conversations about actual truths. Um, I would be very interested to hear what people think about what I think. I think there are going to be a ton of people that go, poof, never thought of that, and then a ton of people that just completely disagree with me. Um, and as I said earlier, I am more than 100% willing to be told I'm wrong and learn from it and film a new episode and go just completely disregard that. Um, so please let me know. Um, and if you've enjoyed this, or even if you haven't, subscribe anyway and tell people about it. I mean, um, I think I'm putting out some good advice uh, and I think it's gonna save a couple of people um, down the track uh, from making some bad decisions and buying overpriced property. Um, so who knows, you might share it around and uh, change someone's life. Thanks for watching.